Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome as we gather for this celebration of Mass. Gather, welcome as you gather with us on the live stream. In the Gospel this morning, we will hear the calling of the Apostles and the sending out. Sadly, in this account, it doesn't say that he sent them out in twos, otherwise it would have given me a great hook to, to say how good it is to have Father Roy here as well this morning, though I would need to be very careful about appearing to make too close a connection, as it were, between the Apostles and ourselves, Accepting, of course, that pattern of calling and sending is the pattern for each of us. It's the pattern as we come to celebrate this Mass, called by God into his presence, inspired and strengthened by word and Eucharist, and then sent out to bring uh, that message and that mission to the world. As we begin, we recognize our weakness, our sense of unworthiness, our need of God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You opened for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. This Mass is offered for the intentions of Father Thomas. So let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. From those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When the country of Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread. But Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. There was famine all over the world. Then Joseph opened all the granaries and sold grain to the Egyptians. The famine grew worse in the land of Egypt. People came to Egypt from all over the world to buy grain from Joseph, for the famine had grown severe throughout the world. Israel's sons, with others making the same journey, went to buy grain, for there was famine in the land of Canaan. It was Joseph, as the man in authority over the country, who sold the grain to all comers. So Joseph's brothers went and bowed down before him, their faces touching the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. Then he kept them all in custody for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this, and you shall keep your lives, for I am a man who fears God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be kept in the place of your detention. As for you, go and take grain to relieve the famine of your families. You shall bring me your youngest brother. This way your words will be proved true, and you will not have to die. 
This they did. They said to one another, Truly we are being called to account for our brother. We saw his misery of soul when he begged our mercy, but we did not listen to him. And now this misery has come home to us. Reuben answered them, Did I not tell you not to wrong the boy? But you did not listen, and now we are brought to account for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood, because there was an interpreter between them. He left them and wept. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your your love be upon upon us, O Lord, Lord, as as we place all our hope hope in you. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. With a ten-stringed lute, sing him songs. O sing him a song that is new. Play loudly with all your skill. May May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. He frustrates the designs of the nations. He defeats the plans of the people. His own designs shall stand forever, the plans of his heart from age to age. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your, May your love be upon, be upon us, O Lord, Lord, as we, as we place, place all our hope, hope in you. Let's stand to greet the gospel. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. By his own choice, the Father made us his children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he created. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits with the power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your steps to pagan territory, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father Tony referred to us being sent out in pairs, not in that Gospel, but... uh, (laughs) I'm going to be sent out as a single person straight after this homily, not quite to the uttermost parts of the world, but to St. Edward's to take Mass. It's the furthest church away from us, at four and a bit miles. A couple of weeks ago, or perhaps a little bit longer, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber was in the news saying that he would open his theatre shows on the 22nd of June, come what may, about the government's decision on restrictions. He, of course, backed down in the, in the event, but cleverly raised his own profile, profile of himself and of his trade to public awareness. It brought to my mind, and perhaps a few others, the famous musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, so popular in the 1960s, which many of us went to see, and purely by a strange coincidence, starting up again in London next month this month actually, July. Based on this powerful human story we've heard today from Genesis, 
You remember Jacob, because of his obvious favoritism towards his youngest son, Joseph, caused bitter division between Joseph and his brothers. They came to hate Joseph and planned to kill him, but stopped short and sold him as a slave to a bunch of traders. Joseph ended up in Egypt, held there. And because of his great ability to interpret Pharaoh's dreams, he had been put in charge of the grain stores when the entire region was afflicted by a terrible famine. Joseph's brothers turn up from Canaan seeking grain, but not recognising the brother they sold into slavery and thought dead. A great story of the tables being turned, but more than that, this story speaks richly to each individual in our present time on so many different levels. And one aspect occurs to me today is that always, not, not always identified with this story, but really fairly obvious, the sin of parental favouritism and the truth that God has no favourites. The story of Joseph is a story of bad parenting upon a family. It is obvious that Joseph was the apple of his father Jacob's eye. Why else would Jacob have singled him out for preferential treatment over and against his brothers? The problem was that inevitably his behaviour caused Joseph's brothers to become trapped by the sin of envy and jealousy. Although they were responsible for their own actions, Jacob had created a culture in his own family in which a dark and destructive way of thinking could take hold, thrive and flourish. Unchecked and unchallenged, it unleashed the drama of events which form Joseph's story. Joseph was able to break the hold of sin within the family. He ended up forgiving his brothers and embracing them. While a lesson to all parents, we must realise that the power of Jesus' cross and resurrection means that we too can break free from sin and sinful patterns in our own lives, some of which can have resulted from our own upbringing, of course. It is through the power of the gospel that we can be transformed, transformed by the renewal of our minds so that we, like Joseph, can be used by God in our families, in our community and in our society, so desperately needed today. Let's start by looking into our own families, then the community, and then guard against that happening in our own lives. Christ can help us. Christ will heal us. Is it now you, Lord, God of all creation? For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. The Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Thank you to the stewards for making it possible for us to be here. Thank you to the IT team, too, for making it possible for so many to join us on the live stream. Reminder, this evening we have evening prayer at 6 p.m. If you have any intentions you'd like included, do please send them office at cpg.church. And we will continue uh, our days of prayer in preparation with Ian and Sean for their ordination as deacons this coming Friday evening. And we pray too for James Lewis, who is here with us this morning, who will be uh, ordained a deacon uh, for the Diocese of Portsmouth. It's very tempting, in the light of that gospel, to make a joke about the way in which the apostles were sent off into the pagan lands and how Guildford is now sending James off to. But I suddenly realised that quite a lot of people watch from Portsmouth, so I'm not going to go there um, and just say that we're glad that we're sharing uh, the message. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.